Welcome to the CEO Bench. My name is Eddie Okila, and my guest this morning on the CEO Bench is a businessman, is an entrepreneur, is a philanthropist, and a social activist. He speaks a lot about youth empowerment across Africa and across the continent. And he's been a man around Africa and oil and gas industry. He's done it all. And he's here with us this morning or this afternoon, or this evening, on the CEO bench, depending on where you're coming from and which part of the world you're actually watching this program from. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present to you Emperor Chris Baywood Ibe. Emperor, welcome to the program. Thank you, Eddie. <laughs> it's, nice, uh, it's nice to be here with you. It's uh, quite a very pleasant day, and uh, I'm ready for you. <laughs> All right, if you're joining us from anywhere in the world, I'd like to bring a very small profile of... Um, uh, Emperor Chris to you. Uh, Emperor Chris is, like I said, is an uh, is entrepreneur and, of course, a philanthropist, a social activist. He is from a state in Nigeria known as Iwusu Awa. Enugu State. Enugu State. So I'm from Enugu State. That's the southeastern part of Nigeria. Okay. Let's talk about that. Now that you've talked about it, who is Emperor Chris? Just a young man, little unknown, but known. Like it, the introduction goes with, and uh, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a social activist, and uh, I'm a mentor of uh, youth. I've been around. I'm a business guy. I take interest in uh, anything that will make the world safe and better place. I'm a family man with four kids. And um, I'm from a family of eight. I'm the third. So Chris Baywood has been around, like you, like, you, like you captured in your intro. Yeah. I've been around Africa, you know, from Western Africa, where I come from, uh, because I'm from the, uh, the ECOWAS region of the Sub-Sahara Africa. Yeah. I've been to, I've been around East Africa. I've been around the Sadak region, that is Southern Africa. I think why is missing is Central Africa. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. and uh, I'll tell you because I take a lot of uh, interest in uh, in Africa because I'm a Pan African. Yeah. I love Africa. I breed Africa. I talk Africa. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so this is uh, why. Most of my e business interest is uh, trying to, you know, tap the opportunities and the potentials that are in Africa, because I believe that's uh, one of uh, Africa. Like I always say, tell, say, tell people is the remaining frontier. So I don't know what I'm going to look for in Europe or what I'm going to look for in North America that they cannot find in Africa. Wow. So this is who Emperor Chris Bewilliver is. Well, if you're joining us from anywhere across the world, that's Emperor Chris Baywood Ibe uh, talking to us on the CEO bench. He is the CEO and the president of the Baywood Group. And the Baywood Group has offices all across Africa and, and Europe. And we're going to know, and in South America, I think, we're going to know. North America. North America, and we're going to know a lot about more about that on the CEO bench. But we want to start the, you know, the discussion, uh, Emperor Chris Baywood, from a, a point of leadership. A lot of people are doing great stuff across Africa, and sometimes those who are doing great stuff across Africa is not known to us. Sometimes we don't know the talent we have, but we have been looking at your profile, and I want to start from a more personal note of knowing you from what is leadership to you and what is self-leadership to you? Well, it depends on where you're coming from. Leadership, are you talking about political? Are you talking about uh, human leadership or human capital? Uh, but generally, leadership is uh, being this man that uh, gives, um, sets the, the directives, or rather sets the, the, the process in motion. Uh, a thought out process and they follow this process and they walk your talk because it's not about the leadership it's not just there okay this is how we're going to do it and uh, perhaps you set the process in place 
but they are doing contrary. So leadership, they say, starts with you. And so if you want to talk about business leadership, how to, how to go about the business, it has to be seen on the way you conduct your own business. And they, don't forget that they always say that uh, the greatest asset you have in every organization is uh, human beings. So leadership starts with you and how you interact with the people around you. You know, even in your home. The truth is, if you're not able to lead your home very well, you can't lead anything else. Wow. Yeah, I think if you have a broken home, uh, let's put it this way. If you're not able to manage your home very well and put your, your home in a good pedestal where everybody seems to be aligned with you, I would doubt it very much if you have a, a very good, if you have a, a good set of mind to lead any other organization, be it in business, be it in a social arrangement, be it in a, um, a, what they call, you know, CSO world. So CSO world means the social, uh, uh, community social organization, so I know. Um, so, for me, leadership starts with you. Mm -hmm. And this is what I, I have set the example for myself. And whatever I do, I have to do it right. I know, have to, I know the, the principles that guides it. I know the policies. You have to have the right policy from work. And this policy from work has to be seen to be according to, working according to the way you have said it. Yeah. And he said everybody uh, along that line, that trajectory, and they follow suit. And then make sure you, you lead by example. Because a lot of, one of the challenges we have in Africa that a lot of people don't lead by example. You say one thing and do another. So this is exactly for me leadership. Leadership is that quality you have to lead others. And others will look at you and emulate you and follow you. And follow you through and through because they believe in you. So first of all, you have to buy the confidence of the people. All right? And this is what I'm saying. If in your home, you can't get the confidence of your children, for example, uh, daddy comes home every time by 4 a.m. and then daddy messes around in the house, maybe he smokes and everywhere is littered, or daddy drinks and he's just uh, um, so reckless with everything. You don't expect your child tomorrow. You tell your child, hey, listen, you must not come back uh, anything later than 7 p.m. You can only say yes. Yes, Daddy, I hear you. But do you think he's going to abide by that? Because we're already setting by ex a little by example. Yeah. He sees you come home at, uh, at 4 a.m. Or anytime he asks for Daddy, Daddy's not at home. Yeah. So leadership starts with you. And if you set that example, others will follow you. Wow. Thank you very much, uh, Emperor Chris Baywood. Let's talk about yourself, self-leadership. How did you pick yourself? Where did you come from? You know, take us back from growing up and getting to where you are today and who you are today. Some people out there may not know who you are today. They just think that you're just a man with a good, deep voice, sound like some movie star. This is like Barry White. This is sound. This many people will mistake you to be Barry White. Many people will take you to be, you know, Morgan Freeman. You, where, where, where is Emperor Chris, and the name Emperor. Well, like I always tell people, I'm a man with uh, different shades of colors, positive, right? But you can have uh, different shades of colors, but negative. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I meet, I meet uh, positive vibes. You yeah. Know, because, uh, yeah. Uh, I've read quite a lot of books that teaches on positive energy yeah. and uh, law of uh, attraction. What is love attraction? You have to love yourself first. Yeah. If you can't love yourself, you can never attract the same positive um, um, aura. Yeah. So I, I learned that over time by reading quite a lot of books. And one of such books I read is, uh, I, I tell everybody to read that book. Either you read it or you watch it. It's Secret by Ronda Byrons. Um, it's quite captivating. Uh, and it's quite uh, insightful. It, it's motivational. It, it's inspirational. It, it's um, uh, it's one one of such books that when you read them, uh, you you see your, you, you start to when especially when you read them and put them in practice, yeah. right? Because one thing is to read the book, 
or read books and try to see, provided you are on the right on the right part. You, you know, you can read certain things and they, they have certain information that m might send negative vibes. So for me, I always look at the positive vibes for everything. Uh, so a man of different shades of colors, I say is I, I come as a very corporate person when it's necessary. I come as a very, um, as an activist when it's necessary. I come as um, a lover of life, um, socially. I, I describe myself as a social butterfly. <laughs> yes, uh, I think so. Yeah. Because um, in certain quarters, when you see me, you will imagine that you will just begin to ask yourself, this is not the same person. Yeah. But if you see me in my office where I'm walking, and you look at my face, no, my face turns you up because I'm serious in my business, OK? When is that moment? I face it. And when it's time to, to have fun and just drop my guard, I drop my guard and then, and then, and then come down from my high horse so I can, I can relate with the people at the level, yeah, at this level. Because if you don't do that, you'll be alone. You'll yeah. be left alone, yeah. all right? Yeah. One of the biggest challenges we have, rich people have, or the wealthy people have, is loneliness. Yeah. And why? When you can't come down from your high horse, Right? Yeah. To relate with the people at the, at the level. You'll be alone. Yeah. So it's a lonely world. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I grew up as a young man, uh, like I said earlier, from uh, a family of eight and number three. Mm, I would say from a mid average family. My father, my father was a farmer of an issue before he got into So He was a miner, a coal miner. He worked in the coal. He worked in the coal corporation because, in my state, um, before oil was discovered in Nigeria, the main exchange earner, foreign exchange earner for Nigeria was coal, granite, cocoa, and all those other and, uh, agro, agro products. And of course, a whole lot of things was happening around coal and around the uh, coal. And the, uh, so we have the coal belt, the coal belt yeah. in my zone. So my father worked in coal corporation. Okay, he understands what it means to be a hard worker. Yeah. He understands principles of discipline because if you work in, in such an environment, yeah. um, anything can happen. The, the next minute you are alive, the next minute you can you can you can you can, you can die yeah. because of the accidents or the inherent challenges in the, in the, in the coal in the coal uh, mining. Yeah. So he, he he comes across a very disciplined a disciplined guy. Um, so we grew, we grew up being very disciplined children, and that has instilled quite a lot of things uh, uh, growing up. Although um, growing up as a young man, being the first male child, I didn't know the story of male child in Africa, so I was so treasured. The, the first were, were, were ladies, you know, and um, by the time I was, uh, I, was, I was born and male child, it was like, oh, wow, this is the best thing that could ever happen to the family. So I received so much attention from my, from my parents. And um, to the point that they, I almost lost it as a man. Uh, but thankfully, uh, there was a turnaround when my father decided to be tough on me. <laughs> Tell us about me, brother. How, how did your father become, decide to be tough on you? You were so loved from what I hear from the literature I've seen about you. You, you seem to have been a, a man who has very interesting background. I mean, one would describe as the man who is up, not up, in the middle, is somewhere. What, 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 what did that mean to you? What, what was the turning point? Turning point for me, I mean, so, so, many, so many things have happened in my life that... Uh, but my father said the tone, you know. Um, he toughened me, I would say. And um, that, what, that such moment can never be forgotten. My father let me walk through... Almost like you can liken it from you can liken it to what you see in the Bible, like in uh, Psalm twenty-three. He said, "Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, <laughs> I shall fear no evil." Yeah. Okay. My father made me to walk through the shadow of death as a young boy. <laughs> you know, I don't know whether he did it deliberately. I don't know whether he knew what he was doing. Yeah, we walked through the shadow of death. Yeah, I walked through the shadow of death. You know, as a young boy, because he let me go through a part that. I mean, when my mother got to know 
what happened to me. My mother was in awe and shock. She couldn't believe it. I had gone through an admission process in secondary schools. So I, I first I got, I got admission with the Federal Government College Benin, you know, um, where that was my first admission, Federal Government College Benin, which is in another state. It's in the current day Edo state. But then it was Midwestern state. So I had admission to go to school that. Um, my father took me, or rather, I mean, and he, he, you know what? The, the interesting thing about the Federal Government College then, it was exclusive of the rich and the bourgeois. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The rich and the bourgeois. bourgeois. In the yeah. Sense of, of yeah. Wealth yeah. And, uh, yeah. Both wealth, wealth both position, political, uh, uh, you know, uh, political affiliations and inclinations and stuff like that. But my father was not near any one of those, my family. At the time, anyway, but you know what? So how did you get there? A smart guy is a smart guy, you know. I've been a smart dude from, from uh, I've been dowed with uh, a lot of natural intelligence, don't forget. You know, I think so, I think so, yeah. Uh, I've been dowed with a lot of natural intelligence because it comes from my, my, from my dad. My dad, well, I called my dad, when my dad passed on and I was writing his, uh, uh, what do you call it? His autobiography. Eulogy, autobiography, eulogy. So I said, he's the greatest philosopher I have seen. Because he was full of wisdom and idioms and proverbs. He would never talk to you without proverbs or idioms, you know, and stuff like that. And he would start with a lot of stories. And he'd think he's not going anywhere, and then he lands. <laughs> and you ask him, Dad, well, why are you going through all this? Uh, yeah. say, For you to understand where I'm coming from. So um, he wasn't quite educated, but I mean, I can tell you the little he had is a very, I, I wonder what would have happened if my dad had gone through. Uh, formal education to go to university and stuff like that. Anyway, so uh, that I uh, were naturally imbued with it. I can tell you, both my mom and my dad are quite an excellent human beings, uh, and I, I will always wish to have same parents uh, anytime, even in my next world. Anyway, that said, so I had this admission into Federal Government College, you know, and it was it went wild. It, it went like a wildfire in the community. The son of so 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 got admission in the Federal Government College, you know, and it was like it was a big deal. It was a big deal. Oh yeah, it was a big deal in the seventies, man. I said it was exclusive of the big the big people. Yeah, you know. So my uncle then in Lagos came to Enugu. Um, he was heard the news and he couldn't he couldn't hold his joy. He he came down to Enugu. And took me to Benin again for, uh, for uh, the next level of uh, admission process. And that next level is written and oral interview, you know. So we did that. And listen, when when we arrived in Benin, it was like um, my my contemporary. Well, I was there. My co other colleagues, uh, those coming for the interviews, were driving in in different kinds of cars. In those days, it was Citroen. It was Peugeot. It was Mercedes, in the, it was Ford and other stuff. But we came on a commercial vehicle. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a yeah. dampener to you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that make you lose your self-esteem when, know, when you walk in from a car park, you know, yeah. what we call a motor park, and yeah. the, you know, people are driving in yeah. with, with big the, engine stars. With big engine stars. And, then, and, then, you know. you, and then you walk in. Yeah. But you know what? You believe in yourself. That's one thing I keep telling people. Believe in yourself first. I had this um, awesome confidence and yeah. I believe in myself. Yeah. I walked in, had the exam, written and the oral. Because written and oral will form the cumulative result yeah. uh, to gain your admission into the Federal College. So at the last point, the, 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 I just asked my, the, guy I was, the guy I was right behind to spell yeah. tomorrow. Tomorrow. The word tomorrow. The word tomorrow. And that's why I treasure tomorrow so much. <laughs> you know why? Tomorrow is pregnant. Wow. You don't know what it's going to deliver. Yeah. So you got to look forward for tomorrow. Yeah. And I tell people, it's like, uh, what I tell people, the day of reckoning. There's always a day of reckoning in your life. Yeah. That day of reckoning, it will come one day. That day, you will not know. So it's like tomorrow. It's certain that tomorrow will come, right? But you don't know what tomorrow will bring. So... This guy couldn't spell tomorrow. I'm good with English. And he, and, he, and this boy coming from a new state. And this, uh, from this, this, school, this, this guy, this, this young boy, not, this not young so boy, over, yeah. not so much uh, around him. Around him yeah. you, know, uh, you know, had it all done. And I was, so that plus my written exam gave me admission. But for the love my parents had for me, yeah. 
I got that admission, but my father wouldn't let me to stay. Why? Distance. It takes a drive. Then I think it takes to take a drive of about uh, four, five, six hours to get there in those days, right? Yeah. So the distance was for him. Oh, no, I mean I must I must be close to my son. Don't forget. It. Wow. First, first born, this first, is the first, first male born, right? <laughs> <laughs> Treasure yeah, Island, yeah. Uh, yeah. Treasure the Island. To the throne. Tre yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Head to the throne, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, they decided that, okay, I had admission, but you're not going to go. I did a few months there. My father pulled me back and said, you got to come back home because I have to be close to us. Yes. I came home. Took another company trans, yeah. and then bingo, I landed another one in my state where finally I attended Colliery Comprehensive Secondary School. Yeah. It's in a community called Ngwo, N G W O, Ngwo. Ngwo. Right? Yeah. The school then was run by, that's why it's called Colliery. Colliery is formed from the Co Corporation of this white man, you know, this uh, British people who came to Nigeria to explore coal. Yeah. So the school was like a exclusive, it's again, exclusive, yeah. right? Yeah. So, well, it was good. I got that admission to, to that school. And it's one, it was one of the premier schools then in Enugu State. Then East Central State. Wow. There was no Enugu State. East Central State, State. Yeah. right, okay? Of course, my father drove me to do some clearance. We went to do the clearance. To the school. To the school. Yeah. I went to school. And of course, my father was working elsewhere, not in my state. He was working in another, in another place. Yeah. So um, a drive through we went to the school, did the clearance and everything, bingo. And he said, OK, um, I will go with him. So he would drop me off somewhere. Hold it right there, Emperor. We're going to go for a break. And when we come back from this break, Emperor will continue with his state, uh, with his story of self-leadership, how the transformation happened, how, you know, he became a man from a 12-year-old man to becoming a man, the turning point of the young man, the heir to the throne. The man was heavily protected. Stay right there. The CEO Bench will be right back after this break. <laughs> Welcome back from that break. This is the CEO Bench. My name is Eddie O'Kela. I'm talking to my elder brother from another mother and father in Nigeria, right here in Kampala, the capital city of Uganda. And for all of you guys who are following this from all across the world, please go like, share, far and wide. Make sure you get your cousins, your, you know, your brothers and your sisters, your grandma as part of the CEO Bench to hear this story. It's a story worth listening to. Emperor Baywood, welcome back to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you we, before we went for a break, you were talking about that moment where you had to flip because the love from your parents were too much and they couldn't risk leaving you four or five hours of a drive in another school and they brought you back and there you've gone and visited the school. And we want to know how this boy who was heavily loved by his parents, how a baby who was pampered, most times in Africa, when a baby is over pampered or anywhere in the world, they don't turn out quite well. But you turn out to be quite different. And the story continues from the school. Pick it up from there, Emperor. Hmm. I don't know. Um, anyway, so we're done with the school. I drove with my dad in his car. And um, he dropped me off somewhere I have never been to. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said it's like I walked through the valley of shadow of death. <laughs> <laughs> That's, so you're like David. Yeah. That is the right phrase. Yeah. I walked through the valley of shadow of death. Yeah. And my father just said, okay, guy, I, I'll stop here and I'm driving to my place. I'm, I'm going, so I'll leave you here. You see this road? Mm. This road takes you to Isuawa because my mother was in the village. Yeah. And who are you? You know, not these days when our kids will look in your face and question you. Yeah. Say, Dad, 
why should I do that, for example? Mm. Who are you to challenge your father? Uh, you will receive a smack. Oh, my God. He wouldn't even dare. And my father was just such a strong man. I wouldn't call him a terror. He wasn't a terror, but he dared not. <laughs> <laughs> he dared not. He dared not. Yeah, anyway, he the just said... The will tell you what, correct, the, what the situation correct, will be. Uh, yeah. you know, ah, uh -huh. He said, just walk through this path. Bush path. Bush path. My guy. I walked through that path. And the story, well, some stories were told in the folk tales, you know? Yeah. Tales by moonlight, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. So folk tales, when we're growing up, we'll, be, we'll have a lot of folk tales. They will be telling stories of how such areas are infested with spirits, evil spirits. Yes. <laughs> people, people, uh, when you die, like, you commit something in the village, and you die like that, they will just go and dump you, that they won't bury you. <laughs> and so it's a, it's, it's a evil, Ill, kind of an evil forest, yeah. an evil. So now I just, I just remembered, this could be this way. Mm. My God, I was struck with fear. But do I have a choice? What choice do I have, really? And my father drove off. Don't you understand? So you have to trek this forest and actually walk, get home. I have to walk through that path and get home. I have to get home. Yeah. That was the toughest moment in my life. How old were you? I think about 12 or 10, 10, 12. That was the toughest moment in my life. A young boy, treasured boy, pampered boy. And this man left the me The one they would never allow to sit down alone. Exactly. I walked through this path. Walking through this forest was so calm, but for every little move, <laughs> I'm like, okay. Yeah. The, this, this, this the moment has this, come. This moment has come. come yeah. They're going to devour me now. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just freeze. Yeah. I'll just freeze and start tiptoeing. Tiptoeing like they shouldn't hear my footpath. The height of the moment was when I saw a man walking up to, walking opposite direction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, Wow. Okay, now. Yeah. I'm going to be like a mismate. This man is going to make me a mismate. <laughs> I wouldn't know whether it's a man yeah. or evil spirit it's, it's, yeah. or a ghost walking yeah. around. Or just a normal human don't, being. Don't forget, yeah. or just a normal human being. Yeah, yeah. Because don't forget that this area was yeah. described as yeah. a place where they just dump, dump people there, yeah. who die some unnatural death. Yeah. Oh, God. I said, okay, I'm going to be devoured today. And I was like, I started panting, panting, panting. I was panting until we crossed each other. And I greeted, good morning, sir. He said, good morning. He didn't say anything. He just walked across. And I'm like, is this true? So when I walked a little bit, I turned back and he was still walking. He didn't disappear. Because to me, yeah. he would disappear. Yeah. You know, the ghost. Yes. The ghost would disappear. And he didn't I, respond to you when you say good morning. He just, good morning. Yeah. But that was like... So the moment I walked past him, I had to run. <laughs> it took me... I would say it, it's a walk of about two hours. Yeah. So you know the distance. Wow. It's a walk of two hours until I got home. My dear brother, that was a turning point of making this guy who was like a lily gel yeah. to be, um, to start becoming a man. Yeah. And when I got home and I told my mother this story, my, my mother passed out and said, it, it, was, uh, it was murderous for my dad to have done that kind of, to have taken that kind of decision. But anyway. And yeah. I know that in Nigeria, that can be such a very, uh, uh, we watch in Nigerian movies and how they can express some of that moment. Oh yeah, it was, uh, it was a moment, my mother couldn't just, I say he passed, she passed out in own shock. How my father could do that. I have never been anywhere on my own. Only that was the first time. And only for me to be left alone to do that, uh, to do that work. Yeah. So. Um, what's the book written by Nelson Mandela? Um, he said it's a um, uh, long walk to freedom. The long walk to freedom, yes, yes, yes. The long, long walk to freedom. <laughs> so you felt that was the long walk to freedom, to freedom for you? <laughs> yeah. Long walk to freedom for me then. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I did it before, before Nelson Mandela. <laughs> <laughs> this is a CEO bench. We're talking to Ephra Baywood. He believes that he's a young man, uh, you know, 
in an old body or, or, or an aged mind. Yes. So Emperor Baywood, what a stunning story there of from man from child to manhood, so to speak. That's how you rediscovered yourself. That's how your father had to make sure. There was wisdom there, though. I want to take you straight, um, Emperor, to some really very interesting question about, you know, life. And a lot of us see people like you, and sometimes we're wondering whether we really understand you or not. You are now, uh, you know, been through that school, done that, and... After that school, where did you end up? Well, after the school, I, um, I, I, I had to move to Kaduna because my brother, um, although not the same mother, uh, is my first cousin. But because of how we relate in the family, we have nothing like cousins. Yeah. It's brother, right? My brother, uh, who has been in oil business, I mean, he's been in oil and gas. Uh, but, so they built Kaduna Refinery. You know, uh, he was one of the uh, major proponents of uh, Katana Refinery with a group from Japan called Chioda. So, done with the school, of course, that school, that's also another kettle of fish. That school is an, another school that is a school that really prepared us for, prepared me for the challenge ahead. Um, How did it prepare you for the oh challenge? Oh, yeah, I mean, I mean it, 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 that school was like almost a, 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 a congregation of uh, uh, retired or, I won't say retired, um, def defeated soldiers <laughs> of, of the Biafran War. Yeah. We, had, we had this uh, fratricidal war in Nigeria, Biafran-Nigerian War that was uh, between 1960 to 1966, I'm talking about. Yeah. So the war ended thereafter, and um, there came uh, uh, normalcy in Nigeria. So I didn't see the war. I was a young, I was a very young boy. You know, I was born in, during during those periods. You yeah. know, so so I went to school and getting to that school, the war had ended, and all those who left army yeah. after Nigeria had defeated Biafra, and uh, a lot of our guys who were in the army then found themselves in that college. <laughs> My dear brother. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> that, that problem now. <laughs> that was uh, that, yeah. that was uh, that working to develop them. <laughs> <of that. laughs> Those Biafran soldiers. Yes. Some of them were having shelly shock. You know what shelly shock? Yeah. Because of bombardment of mortars and yeah, stuff yeah, and yeah, shells. Yeah, you know yeah, what? Yeah. They're already having issues with their hearing. Hearing. They, they already had hearing hearing issues. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And they were military in the college. So just in the college, and here comes this young boy at the school, and most others. Anyway, yeah. yes, I think I, I went to a military school. Literally saying yeah. that the school was more like a military school. Yeah. So you are drilled, you are polished, you are living a regimented lifestyle. You had people or masters that you serve, and if it, God bless your soul. If you don't serve them if well. If you don't do well. Yeah. The punishment, the drill, a lot of us couldn't stand it. So for people like us who went through that school and stood up to them and passed through, I think it was a turning point, actually. Yeah. I tell you. It was one hell of school that toughened a lot of us. Smoking in their hand was just uh, like uh, drinking water. And this is when I know that I will be I'll be a good boy because I never I did it once, but I was uh, walking in the air <laughs> all the time. No, no. When I tested it, yes. <laughs> when they make you to they make you to smoke in their hand, right? Yes. yes. So one time I did it, I was just floating. I was like uh, somebody in the mask. Yeah. You know when you when you all if you go to if you go if you see the astronauts how they float. Yes. This is where I saw myself floating. Yeah. And that told me that uh, this is not a thing you can continue. That's one thing that I, I learned out of that. Uh, I had to cut. I, mean, I couldn't proceed. Anyway, that's cool tough on me. Yeah. And it prepared it prepared us for the for the for the launch pad. Yeah. It was a launch pad for us actually. Yeah. Those of us who went to the school. Yeah. A good number of us were, became useless. A good number of us, people didn't know they would turn out to be good people. Yeah. But I'm pretty happy that a good number of us are doing pretty well. And one of us today 
is the country director, head of UN in Rwanda, and many others. We have a lot of them in army generals. Yeah. You know, I'm happy that my father took that decision. If I had gone to the other school that is meant for the bourgeois, children of bourgeois, perhaps I, I may not have turned out the way I turned out to be today. Wow. And I, again, hindsight, I thank God that my father took that decision. Wow. Talking of that, uh, Emperor, let's uh, look at out of that college, how did you end up in the oil and gas sector? How did you, where did you, which university, how did you launch yourself into that? You could have gone back and, you know, continue with the mining like your father was doing. Most times parents raise children to go back to what they're doing, but you turn out different. Can you just share that, your journey into becoming an entrepreneur and later on as an, you know, uh, philanthropist? Yeah, so well, I left school and then I went to, I had to go, I had to, go to Kaduna uh, to meet my brother and then of course to apply for my U.S. visa um, because I was heading to the U.S. Um, down the line, uh, okay, it wasn't coming pretty easy, so I had to set up. Because in school, we were, we were involved in a lot of things. Uh, we did artisanal work, we did music, we did dancing, we did arts, we did uh, you know, uh, construction. It was yeah. more like a technical college. Yeah. So we had all manner of things. So I learned a lot in that school. It's a technical college. So you had the opportunity to go to workshops. Yeah. That's again what I'm talking about, skill and position, right? Yeah. yeah. And once you, you acquire the first skill and passion, you never leave it. It becomes part of you. So I acquired a whole lot of skills while I was in school. So while waiting for this whole thing, I, I decided to set up something like a, 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 a studio, yeah. a music studio. So I set up a music studio while waiting for my visa, and uh, I became a DJ. You know, um, of course, in those days, we were doing LPs. You know, LPs, long play. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, yeah. so not this day that you can just do MP3, <laughs> download music, you know, and uh, online music and stream, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's LP, man. It's gramophone. You just yeah. put it there and it's playing with a, a kind of makeshift, uh, what do you call it, loudspeakers yeah. uh, built, built locally, you know. So, yeah. And then I would go and be blasting my music, you know, entertaining people. Yeah. So I've been... I've been <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I was a DJ man, so yeah. I, it's, a, it's a passion that has all left me because uh, yeah. music, is, music is part of me. If I'm not doing anything, I'm listening to music today. Yeah. So, I did that for one year. And I'll tell you one interesting thing that happened. Mm -hmm. During that time, my brother, like I said, my brother has been an oil mogu amongst many others, again, from my community. So, we always envy them how they make money, how they spend money, the things they do. So... When I was giving money to go for my visa, some guys approached me. I don't know how they knew that I got money. Oh God, that's another thing again. Some guys approached me. These guys, they call them money doublers. <laughs> Do you know that? I don't know if you have anything like that. Yeah, yeah, money doublers, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. We'll double your money. Dude. We call them here money gamblers. <laughs> Just from, from, from nowhere, yeah. these guys appeared to me and said, listen, don't worry. If you give us that money, mm. we'll make you get richer than your brother. You don't know what your brother is doing. Mm. You think he's doing oil and gas? No! This is the thing do, man. People make him rich. Yeah. So you become richer than your brother. Wow. I said, really? Good at 10. I decided to use my money for the visa to go and double. So I can become richer than my brother. I was already, yeah. yeah. I was already planning how to buy a Mercedes. I'm going to teach my brother how to make money. Yeah. Because my brother was already driving Mercedes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you believe? Yeah, I was already, yeah, yeah. okay, I'm going to teach my brother today how to make money, money. right? Yeah. He thinks he's rich. I'm going to tell him. Yeah. So I gave them the money. I think about 1,000 of our naira at that time. Yeah. Oh, the guys were so excited. I didn't see my money. My money was gone. To this day. And so on this day, this guy took me to a place and said, just sit here. We're going to prepare your market for you. They call it market. Yeah. We're going to prepare your market for you. They're going to give you this money. But don't forget, at the first time, they gave me some little notes to go and change. Yes. Go and try this money so you'll be sure that the money we're giving you is real. It's not yeah. fake. Yeah. I went to the market to buy a few things. And of course, it was good money, yeah, supposedly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was good money, supposedly. Yeah. So I went with these guys at the last count to go and collect my market, yeah. as, as, as it's called. My brother, 
The last I heard was somebody screaming and shouting that police has arrested him, bringing the market. Everybody should run away, that the police is coming to arrest everybody. The guys scampered, and then I scampered one side, and that was how they discharged me. Wow. I lost my money. And did you go back to your father to ask I went to my, I, I, was, I was devastated. I didn't know what to tell my brother. I didn't know what to say. I don't, so information got to my brother somehow, and my brother called my dad. My dad came. My dad came, a man of wisdom. He said to me, my friend, the only one word he said, you are stupid. Somebody said, give me one naira. Let me give you two naira. You're just thinking. Don't you think? You should have told the person, why not make yourself rich? Why make me rich before you? Why don't you double the money and make the money yourself? The life of a philanthropist, the life of an entrepreneur, the life of the man who is now the CEO of the Baywood Group that we now know in Nigeria. What a story. Emperor, proceed. So... Your father says you're stupid. My father says you're stupid. My friend, you're stupid. He didn't smack me, he didn't beat me, he didn't scold me as much. But my friend, you're stupid. Hmm? You want to double money, right? Yeah. So the person loves you more than himself? Should I double the money and make the money himself? It's stuck here. And that's what I go to everywhere, man. When you're making a business proposal to me, I'm looking at you. Till tomorrow. Yeah. Till tomorrow. It's, my, it's like my, my sixth sense. I will always remember that word. You're stupid. So, anyway, so he became a guide and he, he set the tone for who I am in business. Then I went to school eventually to Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia is, of course, Soviet Union and all this Republic of uh, Russia. Of all the places, yeah. you went to the U.S. and you ended up in Yugoslavia. I, 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 didn't, I didn't go to the U.S. eventually. I ended up in Yugoslavia. Yeah. Of course, before I worked a little bit with my uncle again, who had one of the biggest construction industries in my state. So I assisted his, uh, the Quantum Surveyor, yeah. who was then in charge of his uh, company, you yeah. know, um, in charge of cost estimation, cost evaluation, and cost evaluations. You know. So, I, I, so I, again, again, I, I gathered a bit of experience uh, working with them as an intern, because yeah. that's one thing, again, I, you have to intern. I believe in intern a lot, because if you do intern, that will stimulate your appetite yeah. and your skill and yeah. interest in everything. Yeah. So doing that job as an intern, you know, s you know, sharpened my appetite and the skill to want to study it. So I eventually went to Yugoslavia to do, um, to study quantity survey. I was there until the war broke out, you know. Anyway, so we lost it. I came back to Nigeria in 1987. Okay. And that's uh, the beginning of Baywood Group. Wow. Let's talk about Baywood Group after this break. We're going to take another break, and when we come back, uh, Emperor Baywood is going to be telling us about the Baywood Group. What really happened? How did it start? You've already got in some part of the story of it is not easy to make it in life, and he's made it. So the question is, are you ready? The CEO bench brings you people who share their story of where they have come from, where they are going. If they're on the top and they're coming down, what lessons do we pick from there? If they're down and going up, what lessons should we pick from them? What are the lessons that we can pick from there and we can use for ourselves? Stay right there. I'll be right back after this break. This is the CEO bench. Thank you.